Hello fellow gamers and welcome to another Pro Guides video. It's your host Cody and we all know that Fortnite's popularity is booming. That means that there are constantly new players joining the game. Maybe you've been playing for a while, but your friend Jimmy down the street finally joined. Woo, Jimmy! Regardless of the situation, look no further as we have just the thing for you. This video is the beginner's guide to Fortnite Battle Royale in Chapter 2. We know this isn't a video that everyone is looking for, but we wanted to make sure that we reach out to all players. So yes, seasoned veterans, you probably know this stuff, but we were all newbies once, and personally, I would have really appreciated having something like this to help me take my first baby steps. Anyway, considering the topic of this video, it's befitting that our question of the day is how you started playing Fortnite Battle Royale. I had it introduced to me by a friend, and I've been hooked ever since. I don't have a problem though, I swear, man. I just, one more, one more game. One more arena. Ah, ah, okay, okay, sorry. Now for all you newbies out there and those of you who are trying to improve, make sure that you check out ProGuides.com. I especially suggest you check out our coaches there. They're all really helpful and will help you understand the fundamentals that you need to find to have success in Fortnite, especially since Fortnite has many aspects. It's really nice to have someone who can help and guide you through this process. We also have a lot of beginner-friendly content for every role. So noobs, stop getting pwned, let's jump into the video. Released on September 26 of 2017, Fortnite is a battle royale game where 100 players are placed on a giant map with a storm that slowly closes in on everyone while they're forced to fight it out to be the last man standing. Fortnite has three core game modes, being solos, duos, and squads, with one, two, and four players per team respectively. Another mode, trios, was introduced, but not as a core. In duos, trios, and squads, you can team up with your friends and work together to survive, or you can play solos for a more intense experience. In Fortnite, there is one primary goal, and that goal is to get the shiny Victory Royale. The Victory Royale signifies that out of 100 players fighting it out to the end, you were the one player who defeated them all, and you were the last player or the last team alive in the end. The ultimate goal of any Fortnite game is to get the win! Get that W, bro! Whether you're playing in a competitive tournament or playing casually for fun, the win is the ultimate symbol of, <laughs> well, beating 100 other players. While a win is pretty difficult to attain, there are certain strategies that you can use to increase your chances of winning. For example, playing a more passive playstyle and avoiding fights is an effective strategy which we'll be going over later on. In Fortnite, there's no particular kill count you have to achieve in order to win. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Sometimes, eliminating other players hurts you more than it helps, but we'll get to that later on in the video. Now that we've gone over the core concept of Fortnite, let's discuss a bit more about this map that you'll be spending most of your time on. There are a bunch of points of interest around this map, with 13 main locations. However, it hasn't always been this way. In fact, until just a few months ago, we had a whole different map. We're currently playing in Chapter 2 of Fortnite, which released on October 15th of 2019. There are currently 13 primary points of interest, with other small unnamed locations scattered around the map. The ultimate goal of each location is to provide loot, being your weapons and healing items, and to provide materials, which can be used to fuel Fortnite's primary mechanic. And the reason we all love the game so much, building like Bob, dude, what's up? Loot comes from one of a few sources. First, we have floor loot, which randomly spawns on the ground in certain areas. Second, we have ammo crates, which provide ammo for your weapons, and sometimes if you get lucky and get a blue ammo crate, they'll include even more ammo than usual and sometimes even carry healing items. Third, we've got the supply drop, which comes from the sky and drops a high rarity item with healing items and ammo. Finally, the most popular source of loot is from chests. Chests come in two types, the normal chest and the blue chest, also referred to as the super chest. This super chest only drops good loot with only the two highest rarities of weapons dropping from them, along with guaranteed healing and materials. Normal chest drops some materials, a healing or utility item, and a weapon with good ammo to go with it, which can be of any rarity. Speaking of weapons, I think now would be a good time to go over the weapons and items in Fortnite, because this is essentially what you'll be using to win the game. The term loot pool refers to all of the weapons and items that exist in the core game modes. Fortnite's loot pool includes 8 unique weapons that come in different rarities from common, rare, epic, and legendary. The higher the rarity, the less bloom and higher damage it does. With different uses, 5 healing items, 3 shield items, 3 utility items, traps, and boats for mobility. Let's go over the Fortnite loot pool so you can get a better understanding of it. First off, we have the long range weapons. The only primary long range weapon in Fortnite as of now is the bolt action sniper rifle. This weapon deals extremely heavy damage, but it only has one shot per clip and takes a few seconds to reload before it's able to shoot again. Next up, we've got the mid-range weapons. These include the assault rifle, the burst assault rifle, and the rocket launcher. Starting at the top, we've got the basic assault rifle. This weapon deals a fair amount of damage, shoots pretty fast, and has good range. 
The assault rifle, or AR for short, is the textbook weapon in Fortnite with everything about it being pretty normal. Second, we've got the Burst AR. This one is essentially the same as the classic AR, but instead of shooting on full auto, it shoots bursts of three shots at a time with a short delay in between. Finally, we have the RPG. We call the RPG mid-range because while it can be very effective at pretty much any range, we mainly see it being used in mid-range for maximum effectiveness. The RPG is great for destroying large structures or hitting splash damage on an opponent. Both assault rifles have clips of 30 rounds and the RPG has one rocket per clip with a very long reload time to account for its explosive strength and power. Finally, the last class of weapons, the short range weapons, these will be used the most as most engagements in Fortnite are in close quarters. These weapons include two types of shotguns, the tactical shotgun and pump shotgun, the submachine gun, and the pistol. Starting from the top, the tactical shotgun deals heavy damage with a fast fire rate. However, this weapon has a large spread and it isn't exactly the most accurate. If you have good aim and you're a bit more precise, the pump shotgun will be your homie, dude. Come on. Woo! I love you, shotgun. Don't ever leave me, please. With even heavier damage but a slower fire rate and less spread, the pump shotgun rewards accuracy and precision with high damage shots. However, if you miss your shot with the pump, then you'll be in a rough spot, so be careful. Many people in the Chapter 2 meta prefer using the tactical shotgun as its fast fire rate allows them to mow down their opponents quicker. Next up, we've got my good buddy, the submachine gun. This close range powerhouse has 30 shots per clip with an extremely fast fire rate. While the SMG damage isn't insane, it makes up for this with a great speed and effectiveness in close quarters. Finally, we've got the weapon that most people consider the worst in the game. The good old classic pistol. I love you pistol, there's no love for you, I'm sorry bro. But it's because you only have 16 rounds per clip and you are unable to be shot by simply holding a button down. Instead, you have to click super fast to maximize its use. The bloom on the pistol isn't great either and its maximum fire rate isn't ideal, even if you click extremely fast. Speaking of bloom, if you haven't heard the term bloom before, let's go over it. In Fortnite, accuracy is important, however, if every weapon was perfect and every shot was dead on, any good aimer would be able to pretty much be unstoppable. To balance things out and create incentive to learn other strategies, the bloom system was introduced. The way bloom works is that instead of bullets going straight down your reticle, they sometimes go off the sides in a completely random pattern. The reticle is in the middle of your screen, and this reticle is important in showing the bloom you'll have. Basically, your bullets can go anywhere between the four lines on your reticle. One way to counter this is to stand still and shoot, which will enable first shot accuracy, basically making your first shot 100% perfect. However, this can be risky as getting sniped or attacked by another player is pretty common in Fortnite. You should always be trying to minimize your bloom by using methods like crouching, moving slowly, strafing side to side, and other methods. Okay, now that we've gone over Fortnite's weapons and some of their basic mechanics, let's discuss healing and shields. In Fortnite, you have a maximum of 200 HP which is split into two parts, health and shield. Your health is your true health and your shield is like an extra layer of protection. Health is preserved through one of four ways, either by using a bandaged bazooka, eating fish, eating forage items like apples, or using a healing item like a med kit or bandages. Shields are replenished by either eating a slurp fish, which we'll explain later on, eating forage mushrooms, or by using shield potions. It's absolutely crucial to carry healing items and shields as you're likely going to be damaged in most of your fights. Out of five inventory slots, usually one or two of them should be filled with these items. Let's discuss the healing and shield items. First, we have the med kit, which takes 10 seconds to use and fills your health bar completely. Whether you have one health or already have 99, a med kit will bring you to 100 health, completely filling your bar. There is an alternative to med kits, and that is the bandage. Bandages come from chests or from floor loots in stacks of five. Each bandage heals 15 of your health with a maximum of 75 total, so you can't reach full health off of bandages. However, they're still a great tool. Finally, we have the bandage bazooka, which heals 15 health per shot, up to 100 total health. This item reloads on its own, and it is basically an infinite supply of health. By shooting it straight down at yourself, you can heal yourself up, or you can heal your teammates by shooting it at them. The bandage bazooka carries 5 bandages maximum and recharges 1 every 20 seconds. That means if you use 3 bandages to heal up 45 health, your bandage bazooka will be full in 60 seconds. However, this bazooka takes up to 2 inventory slots, so it comes at a pretty hefty cost. Next, let's discuss shield items. There are two main shields in Fortnite, the mini shield and the shield potion. First, let's talk about the mini shield. Mini shields drop in stacks of three and you can hold six per slot. They're one of the most commonly used healing items in Fortnite and they take two seconds to use and heal 25 shield. However, there is a limit as you can only heal up to 50 shield with mini shields. Instead, 
To reach full shield, you'll need a shield potion, also referred to as a big shield or a shield pot. These drops in stacks of one, you can have three in one slot, and they give you 50 shield, each with a limit of 100 shield. However, they take five seconds to drink, so you've got to be in a safe area before you use them. I know you like hanging out in alleyways, bro, but you gotta just chill on that for a second, dog. There's one more way to heal up, which is fishing. There are three types of fish you can catch, which all take one second to use and have different rarities. First up is the most common fish, the small fry. The small fry can have six in one slot and heals 25 health with a maximum of 75. If you're looking for a larger health boost, you're looking for the flopper fish. The flopper heals 50 health with a maximum of 100. Floppers can have four in a stack and are super useful for a quick health boost in a fight or if you're overtaken by the storm and need to escape. Finally, we have the best fish in the mall, the slurp fish. You can carry three slurp fish in one slot at a time. Slurp fish grant you 50 effective health when they're being used. And basically, this means that they'll give you 50 of whatever you need. So if you're at 50 shield and 100 health, you'll get 50 shield. If you have 75 of each, you'll get 25 of each from your slurp fish. They simply give you 50 of whatever you need, prioritizing health first and then the shield. Man, I freaking love you, slurp fish. You are definitely invited to my birthday party. Or... Party at Slurp Fish House. Woo! Let's get it. Slurp, 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 slurp. Okay. Fish can be caught by using either a fishing rod or a harpoon gun. The fishing rod is the classic way to fish. They can be found in chests, floor loot, or from one of these fishing barrels. The harpoon gun has 10 shots, can be found in chests, floor loot, or fishing barrels, and it automatically catches fish instead of having a short weight like the fishing rod does. Almost all fish are caught from one of these fishing holes, which are basically white circles in any body of water which have fish jumping around in them. Simply toss your fishing rod or shoot your harpoon gun into the fishing hole and you'll get either a flopper fish, a slurp fish, or a weapon. If you use a fishing rod, wait for your bobber to go down and click again to retrieve your item. The only way to get a small fry is to fish somewhere that has no fishing hole. You might also get a rusty can, which basically has zero use. We recommend trying to carry fish as they are pretty much the best healing you'll get since they heal a lot and only take one second to use. Finally, we've got the last item, the grenade. The grenade can be stacked up to six and drops in stacks of three. This utility item does 100 damage and can be thrown at enemies to deal splash damage to their structures and even hit them heavily. We recommend using grenades against any opponent in a big base, in a building, or someone who builds a lot to damage their structures and maybe even hit them in the process. You can't hide from me, bro. Grenade! Woo! As of today, the best way to move around the map quickly is by using a boat. Boats spawn in any major location on the edge of the map. They can be used to travel across land or water. Kind of weird, right? Honestly, the way that these boats are able to travel on land is baffling, but it's perfectly fine. Anyway, if you're looking to make a long rotation to the safe zone, keep your eyes out for one of these as they are currently the fastest form of mobility in Fortnite. Okay, all right, all right. So we've been over the loot pool, the map, the fishing, even the boats. However, we haven't gone over the most prominent core mechanic of Fortnite, the one that makes this game what it is today. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about none other than building. Without building, Fortnite isn't Fortnite. There are four basic structures. This includes the wall, the floor, the ramp, and the cone, aka pyramid. Some days he's a cone, some days he's a pyramid. These builds are used in conjunction with one another to build cover, gain high ground above your opponents, which I might mention is very important but it can also be edited and toyed with to outsmart your opponents. Some very common building techniques frequently used are tunneling, ramp rushes, high ground retakes, the infamous 90s, and basing up. Finding all the different building techniques and practicing them is up to you. Luckily, we've got a bunch of videos on the Pro Guide channel and a ton of awesome content on our website that you can use to improve extremely fast. Take the time to practice your building and results will show. Building is performed by using materials which include wood, brick, and metal. Materials can be farmed by using your pickaxe to destroy anything from fences to trees to cars to buildings to furniture and more. One great thing about Fortnite is that you can interact with almost anything. Almost anything you run into is farmable. You can see your material count on the bottom right of your screen. Each build takes 10 material and you can decide which material you need to use based on your situation. If you're in a normal fight, wood will do. But if you need a heavily reinforced building like a base or a box to heal in, brick or metal will definitely work better. Now let's head on over to editing. Editing is another crucial game mechanic used in direct conjunction with building. Editing is used to modify your structures. You can do anything from a simple window or door edit in a wall, all the way up to spiral staircases and other crazy looking things. The beauty of editing is that it is such a unique system and so many new editing tricks are constantly being discovered. Let's quickly go over how to actually edit a structure. 
Once I build this place down, look at it and press the button labeled edit. Once you press this button, select the titles you'd like to use for your edit and press your edit button again to confirm it. Let's quickly go over a few popular edits. First, we have the basic wall window edit. Simply select any one of the tiles on the middle row of your wall and confirm the edit. Doing so on the left or right side will make a slightly thinner window. The middle one is a much larger and more open window. Second, we've got the wall door edit. This door edit consists of editing the bottom two tiles of any column on your wall similar to this. All door edits are the same and they can be edited on any column. All door edits matter, baby, come on. For the floor, the only two edits you'll be doing much include the corner edit by simply selecting one corner or the side edit by selecting both tiles on one side of your floor. Both of these are super useful if you're above an opponent and you have control of the floor above them. For the ramp, two main edits come to mind, the side ramp edit and the backwards ramp edit. First, the side ramp edit is done by editing one side of the ramp from the side closest to you straight to the other side. The backward ramp edit is done by looking at the center of the opposite side of your ramp and dragging it back towards the tile that you are on. By doing either of these edits, you can gain a significant edge in extreme close range encounters and you'll be in the same box. So oh, you got a new friend, senor. Where's Jimmy at? He's not online, but I got this guy. Finally, we've got the cone edit. Only one cone edit is super common among novice players, and that's the corner edit. This corner edit is done by selecting one corner of your cone. This is super versatile, as it can be used to peek in a base, go up a structure in a fancy fashion, or in a close range fight to confuse your opponent. Editing is super helpful, and experimenting with edits in Fortnite is a great thing to do. Practice your edits often, and you'll be pulling off crazy plays in no time. Hold me back, bro. I'm gonna freaking lose it on this guy. Whoa, chill, 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 chill. Let's look at why and how to take a fight. Don't just jump in, bro. One common concern among newer players is whether they should run around looking for fights or if they should play safe and try to go for the win. While getting kills may be good practice, it might take a while to get that win. On the other hand, while getting the win is super satisfying, are you really gaining anything if you just camp the whole time? Ah, hold me back, bro. We recommend a fair mix of both strategies. It is the honest truth that you won't improve unless you fight another player and learn from your mistakes. But also, if you don't get some wins every once in a while, it'll be a bit harder to keep your confidence up. We recommend that as a beginner player, you should take every fight that you can get into and learn from every mistake you make. Did you mess up a build? Go practice it over and over until you can do it consistently. Did you miss a shot? Practice and improve your aim. Did you forget an edit? Do it consistently so you won't mess it up next time. Treat every fight as a learning experience and improve on your mistakes. That is the best way to get better at anything in life. Alongside this, playing aggressive and eliminating other players can be very rewarding beyond just the dab that you do over their body. Dab, 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 dab. When you eliminate someone, everything they have will drop from their healing and shield items to their weapons, ammo, traps, everything in their inventory is now yours! <laughs> While the aggressive playstyle is good, keep in mind that there's nothing wrong with getting a few wins to keep your confidence up. Remember that Fortnite should be fun, and there's nothing wrong with trying to camp and win to get a few under your belt. However, for maximum improvement, we do recommend sticking to a more aggressive playstyle as much as possible. Cause who doesn't like to get a sick no scope, baby? Battle Royale is fun and all, but playing it all day can be a bit tiring. And dude, you might want to try to find some other ways to practice and to have fun. So if that's the case, we recommend trying to check out Creative. Creative can be accessed from the starting screen, or you can select it by switching the game mode in your menu. Or finally, you can switch to it from the other menu screen where solos, duos, and squads are located. There are a ton of creative maps, or you can create your own. One amazing part of Fortnite Creative is the ability to create and customize your own islands. That means that you, yes you, can create your own islands to play or hang out on. Time to hit the luau bro, get the coconuts, and uh, let's get it cracking, y'all. But first, let's talk about some uh, 1v1s in creative. Yeah, let's talk about that. Creative 1v1s are arguably the best way to improve your mechanics. By playing against other players in a low-pressure, practice-based environment, you'll be able to improve and sharpen your skills without the frustration of losing in-game. 1v1s come in two forms, the playground fight and the box fight. The playground fight is performed like this. First, both players build a ramp opposite from one another and place a wall in between them, like so. Next, they both sprint into the wall and one player makes a full arch edit to initiate the fight. Once you run up your ramp, perform any builds you like to push for high ground, and from there, the fight is all up to you. Good luck, soldier. On the other hand, we've got the creative box fight. 
Box fighting is essential in Fortnite, as most engagements result in close-range shotgun battles where the player with the best edits and smartest plays is often the winner. To play in box fights, you have to input a code into one of the featured riffs. Here are a few popular map codes for you, bro. You got the Advith box fight map. You got the moving box fights. You got the box fight free for all. Wage box fights and fiber box fights. Don't forget your fiber, y'all. A box fight is pretty much a free fight in a small enclosed area. This represents around 75% of Fortnite engagements that you'll run into. Practicing your box fighting skills is absolutely crucial to getting good at Fortnite. We recommend utilizing box fights and playground fights to improve your mechanical skill and decision making within fights. Fortnite Battle Royale is a super complex game with a lot of different strategies, play styles, and a ton of different ways to improve. Improving in Fortnite is a difficult thing to do, but at this point, you got the knowledge, you got the core mechanics, and you got the basics of Fortnite. So the only thing left for you to do, player, is become a player. Pop in that game and start doing it, dude. Watching the Pro Guides YouTube channel or checking out ProGuides.com will also help you hugely in improving at the game faster, so give that some consideration as well. Alright guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Go into the next early game confident knowing that you've got a good strategy and you will come out of your fights with great loot, materials, and a path to the end game. Cause we getting that W, baby. Really hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to use code PROGUIDES in the Fortnite item shop when you make any sort of purchases as it really helps us out and we really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you thought about this video and what you'd like to see on the next one. We aim to bring you guys the best daily Fortnite content, so do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuides.com some love for bringing you to this video. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Cody. You can follow me on Instagram at Coco Midler. And guess what, guys? I'm gonna go hang out with Jimmy down the street. So I'll see you on the next one. Woo!